one. I think we have liftoff. Oh my God. I didn't even know I had a mic, uh, headphone jack on here. So you connected your, um, you connected your, uh, microphone and your, um, headset or what's going on? You look very good, by the way. You look relaxed. Did you just take a shower? I took a bath. I took a, uh, I had an egg sandwich. You had an egg, fried egg or uh, egg salad? Uh, fried egg with cheese. I know. I would, I would expect it to be fried egg with you. You look fantastic, too. I feel good. I feel energized. I just took a long walk. I wore the right shoes this time. I usually yeah. wear, when I take a walk, I usually wear dress shoes just because it makes me feel more grounded to the world and, and it, make it makes you feel like a work day, especially during the work week. And your tux, too, as well. Well, I, I would say that's true, too. I mean, <laughs> so and you're a winner. Are, this has been, uh, last time I saw you was the Comedy Cellar in New York. I think it yeah. was uh, March 09. And, um, you know, I've always, always fascinated by, now I know you're interviewing me, but I just want to say this really quick because it's, you have such quick wit and great jokes and you, you do a little crowd work and then you do a little joke and then you sidestep it and then you go back into it. What is it, what is going through your mind when you do stand up? I mean, is it just a cataclysmic effect or is it? It's survival. It's just energy, I think, capturing the energy. Are you uh, surviving yourself? Are you surviving against the crowd? Uh, against, the, uh, against the crowd, I guess, and against the other comedians, kind of. I mean, you want to at least keep, keep the same energy. Is it all about energy? Because a lot of times you're, you know, you're in seeing, so you're, you're bringing the first amount of energy. Yeah. And then when someone goes up, you do what? You... You try to lift them up, or you try to. Act. Well, it depends. If they don't do, if the act doesn't do as well as they want it to, I'll try to do a couple minutes. But if they do well, I usually just move it along, you know. But it's the energy of, uh, you know, some people have material, and some people have timing, and some people have energy and timing, and I'm probably in the latter group. You know, energy. You, and, uh, you're in the group that uh, that enjoys ladders. I do love ladders and because things are always looking up. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, I don't much. want to hold you back from interviewing me. And, you know, I'd love to be interviewed. I'm very vain. I, 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 I am. But I am. Does it bother you then that, you ha that, that you're a junior or as being vain? You know what it is? It, it kind of gives me a step up and a step down. It, it kind of lets sets. It doesn't set anything. It, I'm not trying to define myself. I've already been defined by my father. But, right. but it's also like, I'm not a first, second, third, fourth. I'm not, it doesn't feel like I'm like a, you know, part of some sort of, you you're know, not a English change. kingdom, you know. You're not at a, a, a line dance of family members. Right. It's not, you know, it's not a um, whack em Tuesday. It's not a karaoke Thursday. It's, it's, it's basically a, just. Cha -cha -cha. It's not a cha-cha-cha. So it's, it's not even, uh, it's not even cha-cha Sandoval. It, it's a cha-cha Che Guerva. Wow. It is. It's a Che Guava. <laughs> uh, you know, you're making me thirsty. Now, what is your favorite well, drink? I like um, I like cider. I like uh, just apple cider and uh, uh, I sometimes like apple cider vinegar with a shot of uh, Tabasco. Uh, if, if I'm just relaxing, I like pear soda. What is it? Real pear sugar. soda? Pear, pear soda. soda. It's just pear flavor with soda and, you know, a sparkle of maybe a cherry on top. It doesn't really matter to me. It just whatever's liquid, but you know, I, I don't drink anymore. So I used to enjoy margaritas. I used to enjoy strawberry daiquiris. I used to enjoy, you know, regular beer and things like that. But now I'm just sort of, I want a tart flavor, but I don't want anything that's going to like be too aggressive. Right. You used to like cider. I mean, now you like cider, but you used to, when you were partying, you used to like being in cider. I feel so. I feel so. I, I continue to feel so. That was you know, I, I, I know how to play uh, tennis with my left hand. You wow. Know? So, Why? Well, I, I, when I was when I was studying for the role of chaplain, 
I was, um, you know, I do all kind of back and forth sort of acts and, you know, uh, feats and I had to have dexterity in ways that I never had before. So one of the things they asked me to do is get more left-handed and that's what I did. My, one of my favorite things to do at the real, at the comedy cellar with the other comedians is to ask them who wrote the song Smile. Because most people don't know. Is that an right. interesting tidbit? And you know, um, who, who wrote the song Smile? You don't know who wrote the song Smile. I do. I just want to see if you know. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Buster Keaton. That's what I thought. No, it's, it's uh, Charlie Chaplin. That's what I thought, too. Yeah. But you, they co-wrote it. I think they both wrote it. Is that true? Yeah. Buster yeah. Keaton was hanging off a building as, yeah. as they yeah. were writing? Wow. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and how has your life changed in the, in the last, you know, when you got in Oppenheimer? Congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Did you think it was going to be a good movie? Were, were you excited? You know, it's so rigged in Hollywood that I knew it was going to be a good movie because that's what they tell me. And usually that kind of information is real. That's why we do the movies that we do because it's sort of you set know up for ahead success. Of time. You know ahead of course. Of time. Yeah. When they, when they wow. tell you it's going to be black and white, when they tell you it's going to be, you know. Um, or if you have a disease know, this, or something. Well, think about how powerful the bomb is, you know. Yeah. You know, think about yeah. how powerful that is. So it's 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 a metaphor and a, and a microcosm for trying to be that big, trying to go to the level that you need to go to. And that's what fueled my performance. You know, this basic ideology of, you know, um, rising to the top. And that's what I did. You know, I've had a very difficult life. I started smoking yeah. pot when I was six years old. Yeah. You know, but thanks to my wife, Susan, um, things have gotten so much better. And I just, you know, it's through the roof. Now I'm an Oscar winner and, you and, know, and, who, who, and you're not California sober either. Well, I enjoy sand, but sand's everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. oh you used to, used to love Las Vegas, I bet. Well, you know, you go to the comedy show a lot of time. You know, a lot of times I wouldn't even tell you I was there. I would what? just dress up like Humphrey Bogart and wow. just kind of catch the show and try to enjoy myself, you know? And you remember everything from those days, even though you were a little... Well, I didn't, I didn't make those faces. Um, oh. Oh. I didn't do the, the Marty Moose thing, but oh. you remember the Marty Moose thing? No, I don't. What is that? It's, it's from a, a vacation. It's like, it's up to Marty oh, Moose. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember uh, John Candy was, I think he was pantomiming the moose or something. Yeah. But um, n no, it's 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 what it is. It's um, it's a journey. It's yeah. um, a remembrance. Would I you mean, ever um, give up those days? Or are you glad you went through? I don't uh, think so. I think if I knew at that time, if I was told during the partying that I would end up winning an Oscar, I I think I would have been too in my head about things. Right. You know, because what we do is meaningful. What we do is important. And what we continue to go through is a journey. And I think at that particular time, I would have probably cut back on the vodka sodas. But right. then again, maybe I wouldn't. Maybe you would have cut back on just the soda. Well, and, and that probably would have led to me being oh, more into soda, which I am, like I told you, a pair of soda. I love it. Well, this is... I, I've always been intrigued. I've, I've followed your career uh, ever since since you started, and uh, I'm uh, I'm not amazed that you won an Oscar. Uh, I'm amazed that you, you were alive to collect it, but not that you won it. You know. Okay, so you're saying it. you see the fabric that made the couch, but you're not surprised. I mean, you, you, you're not surprised by the fabric on the couch, but you're surprised that the couch made it to Boston, to Florida, back to Boston. Right. I appreciate and, that. And didn't circumvent, you know, go the 40 and then the 80 and then back to the 40. Again. Right. Right. Well, I mean, how hard is it to find a couch that fits, that you're you're happy well, with, that, that that you can sit in? I mean, a lot of couches look great. You buy a couch okay. online, you end up getting it, but you just don't want to sit in it. You can't because lay on it because it's sunken, right? It sinks. It sinks. 
and uh, you, you know, get tired of it because it gets used to you. Now, just like you, you know, in your life, you get used to people, and they get boring to you. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And then, and then sometimes you'll, I don't know if you find this true, but you'll talk to someone on the phone for, mm, I don't know, like, you know, two years and they're great on the phone. But then when you meet up them, you know, you meet up in person, it's like, but, you know, I just want to you know get the hell out of here. You know, you know, I can't help but feeling that that was like an undercurrent to me right now, but maybe not. I'm paranoid, you know, cause I'm on a uh, little mushroom pills. Tell me about the mushroom pills because I can live vicariously through you and your uh, your antics. Well, um, where do you get them? What do they do for you? Where do they come from? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I get them from Carlos, my friend Carlos, uh, and he and they're microdose. They call. Uh, they're very. You, you don't feel them really, so I take like fifty of them. So they're microdose, but then you take a handful, and then it's like I take a, it's a regular it's like dose. Food. Like doing mushrooms, and who's it's Carlos? Always, uh, I, uh, I, I don't. Uh, he's just a. Uh, I, 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 did I say Carlos? I meant uh, Thomas, my friend Thomas. Carlos Thomas. Uh, yeah, there's no Carlos. I don't think we could identify the guy by just his first name. Mm. Oh, oh, then it's my friend uh, Carlos Rodriguez. Is he a baseball player? Uh, not yet, but he hopes. I know a Carlos. I know a Carlos Rodriguez that's a baseball player, and he hits the ball really far. He uses a thirty-eight six-inch bat oh. um, off the field. <laughs> so, so you think he might be involved in uh, in microdosing? I think he might be involved in a lot of things. You know, I mean, everybody has hobbies, right? But do we keep track of our hobbies? Do we make a list? Probably not. Unless your hobby is, of course, making lists. That's another point. Then, that, you, that's... then you would make a list. Now, let me ask you a question. Since you, I had that down to ask you, what do you do in your spare time? What do I do in my spare time? Well, um, yeah. I just try to relax. I try to calm down. You know, I, I love my wife, Susan. And I love she Susan gives too, me back way. rubs. You, you know Susan? Have you no, met but her? I just love the idea of her. Right. And that's really what she is more than anything. She's an idea. You know, she's a oh. wife. Oh. She's my wife. Right. I have a wife. So right. it all checks out. You know, I can go on trips with her. I can take photos with her. I give her a ring. People freak out. It's, I wouldn't say she's a prop, but I would say that she's, you know, a human puppet in, in a way. I mean, that one that can actually do like an AI human puppet, like somebody who can just kind of like adapt, you know, be wow. a part of my life, but not, not really, you know, not, not detract. Absolutely mean a lot. I mean, oh, things mean. It sounded like you were kind of like saying, you know. No, I'm just saying, I think actually what I'm trying to say is that we're so matched up, like it makes such sense that oh. it's kind oh. of grown on. It's grown it's into like, its own thing. It's grown into its own thing. I mean, maybe she needs to microdose some mushrooms. Maybe I do. Right. But we're not going to. You know, we're going to have a strawberry, a virgin strawberry daiquiri. I do find that a lot of people now, especially in California, do say they're sober, but then uh, smoke uh, uh, a vape pen or something like that. You mean like cannabis? Cannabis, Yes. And I always thought right. that was kind of contradictory. Well, I think it's it's <laughs> it's a layer of sobriety because if you're doing, it goes sort of like coffee, maybe the microdosing of mushrooms, pot. Aren't um, you fooling um, yourself though? If you say I'm sober and then smoke, you know, a bong hit or a, or a vape pen or something. I don't think you're fooling yourself. You're just fooling other people, and that's okay because you're in Hollywood. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to have an image. You want to get hired. You don't tell people you do Coke. If someone pulls it out, you just do Coke, you know, that kind of thing. But if you're trying to have an image and all you're doing is smoking some pot at night to go to sleep, whose concern is that? I mean, you know. Now, to me, it sounds like you know what you're talking about here. 
well, it sounds like I am. I try to get behind my words. I try to say what I'm supposed to say, look like I'm happy, <laughs> and, uh, you know, smile a little bit and um, hold the tears but back. But it's not necessarily true. A lot so of things aren't. This is, that's heavy, man. That's why people like don't paint their walls. You get an apartment, they don't paint their walls because they're, you know, they don't want to have to like paint them when they're about to leave. And plus, if you do a dark color, you take several layers, several layers of, of, of white paint to get over right. that dark wall. I mean, yeah, it'd be cool to have a black wall, but, you know, you're going to pay for it later. And then it's a void at some point as well. Of course, just like a check. Huh. Uh, I had something to ask you and I, and I forgot because of uh, the microdose. Tell me more about this microdosing. Tell me less about Carlos. That's Tell true. me more wow. about microdosing and how do you know how much to take? And well, what are you looking for as the response? Well, you just want to feel, you just want to take a little, I guess. You don't want to see anything. You want to take enough to feel like, like this. You know what I mean? Jesus, God. If you do, if, if you take too much, you're like, and that's too much. And if you take too little, you're just like. Flat. Listen, I'm trying I'm trying to look at your different faces, but I have to look straight at the camera because that's what I'm used to. Right. And also, when I look down, it looks like I'm sleepy, oh. and I don't want to look like I'm sleepy, so I'm looking straight at the camera. I'm listening okay. to you. I, I assume you made a, a few different faces. I think I might have saw one of them. I was making faces. Uh, you want me to describe them to you? Or you That'd be girl? better, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, if you take too many, you're... Your face looks like it's blown up like a big smiley face and your eyes get big. And, and if you and if you don't take enough, it, it looks like you've had like kind of a little stroke and you're kind of just like, mm, you know, just well, you, you can picture that a guy having like a little stroke, but not too much, sure. but a little bit. And then if you take the right amount, you're just like a little uh, like Mr. Coffee, like never Joe DiMaggio, how he, sure. what he would look like and he would be present, present himself. When I take the right amount of mushrooms, microdose, I feel like I am like Joe, whoever I said. You mean Jolt and Joe? Jolt and Joe. Or, I, I, for some reason, I got him confused. I, I can't, a Joe Garagiola, which people would never even know. Do you remember him? Of course. And, oh, Wasn't he a shortstop? I thought he was an announcer or something. That's what but I thought. I don't want to get him confused because he, he gives me a bad mushroom. In a, in a right way. But Joe DiMaggio with the coffee, he was always right on. So what do you, I, I don't remember personally what that was. Was oh, he Mr. Coffee? coffee? He was he advertising. Was, he Mr. represented Mr. Coffee in the, in the late. Maybe is seven, that because seven. his nickname was Jolton Joe or I, because. I believe it is correct. Isn't that amazing the way the world It's works? amazing. This Jolton, guy lucky it's, enough to be named Jolton Joe. Jolton and Joe. then he does commercials for coffee that gives you a jolt. And right. Joe is sometimes called coffee. Well, coffee. that's the thing. Joe DiMaggio, Jolt and Joe, they had to come up with a J right. adver, uh, adjective right. to come before the name. And, and there's not a lot of J things. You could say right. jammin, but jammin that was Joe. like pre-80s, so they weren't going to use that one. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, jostling. Jocelyn, like Jocelyn Joe, German, Jocelyn. German Joe as well. Well, that's no. spelled wrong. Jersey, Jersey Joe. There was a Jersey Joe. Do you remember him? Uh, there were a lot of Jersey Joes from what I understand. You know, I lived in um, Mars Capone. Oh, uh, I love that. In New York, you know, the area of Mars Capone, and that was... That was weird for me because, you know, I didn't like pizza and I didn't know much about it. So I would wander the streets. And this is before, you know, I started smoking pot when I was six years old. I was also sure. in my first movie, Greasers, when I was six years old. I played a, a child who had his his throat slit by God. And that's not a joke. That's real. Look it up. I will. Um, did you, did, and you lost your virginity very early. If I, For some reason, I had that in my head. I don't know if that's true. Is that true? I lost it. Yeah, I lost it, but then I found it. Oh, how old were you when you lost it? I was, um, gee, Somewhere. I don't know. I, 
below. I six? mean, if I say whatever age I say is going to, I'm going to have to write a book about it, you know, so I'd rather not right. do that. But right. I'll say I found it just like a few weeks ago. Wow. That's like, you know, that's like me kind of. I, in, in the late 80s, I, want, I made love to Sting. And we just finished it last week. Uh, the the singer or a, a singer, yeah. Uh, no, uh, the singer because he's we're very. I wasn't into it at the time, but we're both very much into tantric sex, which takes a long time. Tell me about make me laugh because I loved you on the show and I, I loved that Thank show. I, um, what was it that? How did that come about? What were the back? What were the back behind the scenes, like? Well, how did it come about and how did you get involved in all that sort of thing? I was uh, hired at the first season where uh, Ken Ober hosted it. Uh, it was actually the third season because it was on in the 50s and it was on in the 70s. Like Ken Ober hosted it in the, whenever I hosted it, the 2000s. And I did the show probably 10 times and I had a good time. And for whatever reason, he left the show. So I, uh, they offered it to me and I ended up doing it. We did 100 shows in 10 days. Something 100 like shows you did 100 shows in 10 days. days isn't that crazy we used that's to do five five six are you shows kidding are you joking no, is that a real thing the truth tell the truth uh we do like two in the morning and three in the afternoon or, or vice versa geez that's more than i because i went to the family feud with louis anderson and he would do four shows a day and you know louis was a heavy person sure. so he would you know he'd sweat a lot and it was yeah it was it was fun to watch but it was exhausting to imagine doing and how many show, and he only would do like a quarter of a show a day right and then they would stitch them together well they not, would uh he had cigarettes he had diet coke in his dressing room i remember uh, just like zoning out the chair in there was very comfortable i would take a nap and just kind of zone out oh uh, but you know louie would be like, you guys ready to play that feud oh yeah you know, he would do I, that he yeah. would do that yeah um, but i love louie and and yeah. rest in peace you know yeah because he was a, a Vegas staple where I live now. His name came up quite a bit. Yeah, uh, he has it. He had a thing about making you feel like you were in his living room and, and he was in yours. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm talking about a sunken living room. I'm not talking about just a regular dandy dough living room and a, a fourplex. I'm talking about a living room that you step down. If you forget to step down, you will fall down. Right. That kind of living room. Yeah. And, and, and and if you're microdosing too, that would make that made it difficult as well. You know? Tell me about microdosing. It seems to be right on your mind. You seem to be tripping out. I yeah. like that because yeah. you're doing it for me. Yeah. Why well, did you I was, come on here all drugged up because you wanted uh, I, to just show me what's up or what? Yeah, I kind of wanted to uh, to get into the mindset of who I thought you who I thought you might be. Since I haven't seen you since almost fifteen years, I think. That's right? About you, right. God, you said. I think you said it was two thousand nine. Two thousand nine, March. March of March eight. It was almost to the day, actually. March twenty, something, whatever. It was something. Yes, I remember. Yes, I remember. But uh, I don't remember what I did this morning. Isn't that funny? Well, you made an egg sandwich. Yeah, yeah. And, you made and, a fried. And you made. You only made. I'm. I'm assuming you only made a one egger with two pieces uh, of bread. I do like more bread than egg. Are you a bread? What is your favorite meal? Oh. I like poached eggs. I like um, smoked salmon, um, sockeye. Uh, oh. I like um, blueberries. I like anything that's really good for me. But then also like is uh, kind of my cheat meal is just like honey. And I just pour it on my hands and I lick it. Really? And doesn't that get sticky? No, not really. Huh. I look huh. good. I lick hard. I look good. I go fast. And um, I have photos to prove it. Photos or video? Still photos. Wow. I don't know how that would prove it. but Well, because, I mean, depending upon the photography... I have a guy who lives with me, you know, lives with Susan and I. He just fakes photographs, you know, he just You have I a guy in the living room and he's just there all the time taking well, pictures of Yeah. He, I let him spend the night when he wake up. A lot of times I like photographs taken to me when I wake up because wow. 
it's the most realistic thing. And these aren't photographs I show other people. They're just, they're kind of traits. They're mannerisms. Um, and right. I, I kind of go from there, you know, I just kind of, it's like Quasimodo. It's like, you're not looking at it, but it's there. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of dumbfounded by that a little bit, especially with cameras being so prevalent and, and you spending your whole life in front of a camera. Right. It's kind of surprising that you would have somebody live but in your these, house to take pictures these, of you waking up in the morning. It's hard to understand, and maybe because you're on mushrooms, but real, the reality is these are Polaroids. These aren't ones that are shared with anyone. These are ones to make myself stronger, better, to improve on my looks, my oh. disposition, where I want to go in the morning, where I want you to go at night. Them. You utilize What's that? You're utilizing the picture. I like to think so, yeah, but they do to get destroyed at the end of the day, each day. It's like a, you have your own personal app in your house. The guy is like an app that keeps camera pictures just for a short amount of time, and then they disappear. But the guy is there taking the pictures right. like an app, but they don't stick around to come back to haunt you. Look, I don't. I wouldn't put words in my mouth, even myself. Oh. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't just put words in my mouth. The words come out of my mouth. I don't know how right. they got there. Huh. But yeah, huh. the guy is. You know, he's three foot four. He's only. He's got uh, arms as long as his son, and he takes wow. Polaroid photographs of me, which get destroyed every day. Oh, wow! He's three foot four. Lives in your house. Takes pictures destroys the pictures and it helps your mental prowess well lives in my house is a strong sentence i like it i would like to see it in a book that sentence oh but he is in my house when i wake up i don't know when he gets there he goes to the cat door but do you have a, you have a cat no just a cat door just a cat door it came with the place now if i remember back last time i saw you you had a hamster wheel you still have that hamster wheel? I have part of it. I have the the base. Because the, the wheel time. itself has to be replaced. Uh, but I do have the base. I just have uh -huh. to get another wheel. So you have a cat door, part of a hamster wheel, and no animals, but a three foot four man. That yeah. sometimes. If you want to call him an animal, I wouldn't do that in this no, day I, and age. I didn't mean to do that. If I did, well, I, it's. Almost accurate, but oh. not quite accurate enough for the day and age. Yeah. Yeah, we better be careful with this, probably. So you had mushrooms, you had an egg sandwich. What else is ahead of you for the rest of the day? Uh, I, I probably will um, nap. Are you going like to take a nap? nap? I like to nap. Do you nap? I do nap, yeah. I read that it's, I, I, let me ask you a question, I mean, and, and to lead into this. How many hours a night do you sleep? I sleep 14 hours a night. So wow. you'd say that's the night and then part of the day. Of the um, day. But I have to get up all night long and pee. I'm, I have a very small bladder, and I just I pee all night long. It's just, oh. you know, when I was a child, I used to wet the bed. But now yeah. I don't wet the bed. I just go to pee in the bathroom. But I have to get up every single night, probably about 60 huh. times. Have you tried uh, Flomax or something like that? No, but I love those commercials. I think she's great in them. Oh, um, you know, I'm that's actually a progressive. That's a progressive uh, joke. Uh, progressive. Oh, I'm oh. just making a joke. I, I like the uh, the Jardians girl. I like the Jardians. Girl. Are you saying that right? Yeah, I got diabetes and I handle it well. The little blue pill with the story to tell. I need my daily Jardians. Do you know that, what I'm talking about? No, but Jardians. now I do. Oh, yeah. You don't watch that much television, then? Not really. I watch Andy Griffith show, wow. and I watch Jersey old Jersey Shore episodes. Do you really? Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to guess that, uh, that uh, one of the guys is your favorite character. Just well, for the sake be, of... Well, the yeah. guys are the, the, the strongest huh? part of that show, and I'm just right. saying because of the muscles uh -huh. and the hairlines... Okay. Not Schnooky though. Schnooky is sort of I would almost put her in him put her him and whatever. Yeah, headlock. 
she's nice. She knows what she's doing. I met her actually once at a, a discotheque in um, Century City. And um, she's really good. She'll punch you in the arm. A lot of people she don't will. talk about that, but she'll punch yeah. you right in the arm. She's like a, a what I would consider a, a, a modern broad in, in a good sense of the word. Oh, yeah. In yeah. a broad sense. In a, uh, in a broad sense of the word, she is a broad sense. She has a broad sense in a broad sense of the word. Well, those people made makeup what it is today. I mean, a lot of people don't give enough credit because the they guys, the girls, everybody was wearing makeup, even when they weren't shooting. Um, and they had a, something called wake up makeup, which is makeup you get, you put on before you go to bed and you wake up and you got makeup on. Just wake up makeup. That, but doesn't it just get all over the sheets and stuff like sure. that? While you sleep? Oh, sure it does. But, you know, but they you give wake you up sheets. in the shroud of Turin or something. The wake up makeup people, they wake give you sheets up. so that oh, you. Oh, it comes with sheets. Comes with sheets. Wake up makeup comes with sheets. That's, that's amazing. See, that's why I, I like to ask you questions because I, I'm inquisitive, but my questions are kind of stupid. But you, they use them. You use them as a, a springboard to say something mind-boggling. Yeah, it's called it's called an interview. Oh, oh yeah. It's called an interview. I hope I don't have a disdain about me, but I just won an Oscar, so I have. Well, I'm still sweating. So yeah. Oh, you're still sweating. Yeah. Why are you sweating? Because I'm like, I'm just still excited. You mean? You know, I don't know what it is, but I've always wanted an Oscar, you know, nominated before I had, you know, I had the wherewithal. I knew what I was yeah. doing and it just took a black and white movie. Not, not Chaplin, Chaplin not okay. Chaplin. I thought I was going to win for Chaplin, but. Because that was black and white. That was also black and white. Black and white. That's amazing. And, and, and what is your favorite color? Favorite color is purple. But you've never done a purple movie. Just black and white. Movie. Well, Weird Science had a lot of purple highlights. You know, like, um, you know, a lot of a lot of clothing was purple. This is also the 80s. I, I, I really remember. Weird Science. That's right. You were, I, I, I believe it or not, I forgot. Who was your co-star in that? Uh, you uh, uh, Anthony, Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah. Oh, Anthony Michael Hall. Oh, wow. Michael Hall, yeah. Right. You were charming in that movie. Well, I felt good. I looked good. You, you, I was still yes. partying, but I was doing a lot of push-ups. You were a professional, did, though. You were, you were like the Dick Van Dyke of your generation in a lot of ways. I was the De I was the Dyke Van Dick in a lot of ways. Or some people thought you were the Van Dick Dyke. Some people with a van would, would say that, but, you know, it's not true. It wouldn't be true. But in a lot of ways, it was true that you were the Dick Van Dyke in the fact that you would get drunk and party and still work and be tremendous. You know, I almost tripped on the table every time the show started. I had the same wherewithal. I had the same bandages. Right. I wasn't going to the hospital. It was a minor cut. I didn't need to go to the hospital. That's why I stayed where I stayed. And, um, you know, the paramedics came anyway. But, you know, I'm always a tough guy. A lot of people don't know that. You know, I have a soft side. I you know, smile a lot. And I remember I like this. even then you didn't want to copy people. So you wouldn't trip over the ottoman. You would trip over the table if you ever did. That's what I meant to say was ottoman. What did I say? Table? Oh, you said table, but I thought you did that on purpose. No, your... I meant to say ottoman. Oh, so you weren't honoring any kind of honor by saying table. Interesting. I'm missing uh, every other word. I'm, I don't know if we're breaking up. I, I don't know. Are you I'm... having trouble? Yeah. I Let me... can't. Yeah. Are you really having trouble? Let me um, see. I don't know what to do here. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just try to figure this out real quick. I think. Um, um, I'm trying. Yeah, I I can't hear you, so I'm gonna have to. We have to cut it short. Okay. Could you hear me earlier? Just kidding. I can hear you. You son of a. Can you hear me all right? Because I could hear you fine. I could hear you the whole time. Son of a. Just joke. joking around. Stop joking around. No, but seriously, I got to go because I just got to go. I got things to do. I got bologna to fry. I got fucking calls to make. You know what I mean? I'm trying not to eat bologna anymore. Tell me about that. Uh, uh, I'm reading everything I do is bad for me. Soda, trying to cut out soda. 
I'm trying to get out processed foods. I'm trying to sleep more than uh, five hours a night. Well, That's you're it. doing good. I think the egg sandwiches are a good start in the microdosing, unless you're not doing, I'd say do a handful. Don't do two handfuls. Don't do two handfuls. You know, they look like M&Ms too, and sometimes my uh, daughter eats it by accident. Is that right? Yeah. I remember when I was a child, there were vitamins. I, I chewed on the vitamins because I thought they were uh, M&Ms. Same thing. Oh, and, yeah. Um, I threw up so bad. I still vividly remember throwing up on beige carpet. Uh, was that was your neighbor's name? <laughs> you're a good guy. I really enjoyed talking to you. Honestly, seriously. Call me when you're in New York uh, or call I, me I when will. you're in California and I'll tell you, you what place the same I'm number? at. You have the same phone number? Yeah, pretty much. You, oh, I'll try it, I guess. Then. I'll try that number. And if that number doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, just I'll, I'll be figure, back. I'll figure something out. Oh, you're going to? Okay. Well, I'll be, I hope in, I'll be in Vegas. I think I'm in Vegas April 1st through the Where? 7th. Are you really? You are? Yeah, I'm going to go see Jeff Richards. He's going to be uh, there. So I love Jeff Richards. Oh, yeah. So he's just uh, fun, fun guy. I think he and microdoses a lot, if I remember. I don't know that he does. No? I don't know that he does. He I don't know like that he does. does. You ever talk to him? Like when Yeah, I've talked to him hours a little, at length. He seems a little kind of like he's a little, again, with the hands. He, uh, this he is the it. Marty Moose thing. I don't know if you remember the Marty Moose thing from, I do from now. vacation. You're, this was yeah. the Marty Moose thing. But that's the way Jeff is appears to me when I meet him in person. And a great guy, by the way. I, I enjoy him. But he does, even if he's not doing this with his hands, yeah. he must know what I'm talking about. He seems like he's doing it. Right, you know right. I mean? He's always got right. that, you know. Right. He is a, he's a basically like a more lucid Truman Capote vibe. Uh, yes. It, it, mixed yes. with like Connie Selica. Right. And Truman Capote during the In Cold Blood era. When Definitely. Right. Yeah. Definitely. But a great guy, really great guy, and great dancer. People don't know that Jeff's a wonderful a line dancer. Yeah, he does. He likes he likes lines. Yeah, likes and you used to too back in the old days. Well, I mean, it's not that I don't like them anymore. I just you know, I, I choose to get uh further away from them and um, you know, have my own my own wall. I have to have a wall. You do have to have a wall. Well, I, I'll be there. If you come see Jeff, come see me at the end. We'll, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, and I'm very excited. I like Great. to see you every, every 14, 15 years. I think it's good for us. I think it's just the, just the right amount of time. <laughs> okay. Thank <laughs> you, right, man. Bro. I'm, I'm you, glad. Buddy. I hope we got some done. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.